Good people, I'm Dimitri, and today we're taking a look at the SXFI Gamer headset from Creative Labs. The thing is, I did not actually want to review this headset until they emailed us with two big claims, saying this is the best microphone on any gamer headset, the Commander Pro microphone. So let's test out if this actually sounds the best versus my entire gaming headset collection. And number two, they claim it also has the best surround sound gaming experience using their holographic uh, algorithm that maps out your ear and your head size and gives you a more personalized approach to surround sound audio that has been specifically tuned for esports. And that to me is kind of a bizarre element in the first place because normally you don't enable surround sound for CSGO, for Battlefield, for Call of Duty, because that usually mutes out all the important elements. Whereas with Creative, they claim with the new battle mode, it uh, gives you the best directionality and the best positional awareness and also takes into account the distance of audio cues. So not only does it expand your environment, but does it so accurately for esports. And so that is why I'm excited to check out the SXFI Gamer. By the way, the proper way to say SXFI Gamer is SXFI Gamer. We ain't gonna do that. So I've been using this headset for the past week and I'm excited to share my experience testing their claims about this being the best microphone in class and their surround sound for esports games. All right, let's check it out right after this. What does it take to experience a compact, high-performance gaming notebook? You want specs that can meet the most demanding tasks like a fast CPU, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, ultra-fast NVMe SSD, and RTX graphics. You also want something that's lightweight and easy to carry around. How about a robust optical mechanical keyboard with per-key RGB lighting and a fast 144Hz IPS display? This is a new XBG Xenia gaming notebook. Check it out at the links below and game to the extreme. All right, so first of all, it's pretty competitively priced at $129. So going against the PC37X, the Logitech G Pro X, but this being a USB type C headset, you're not relying on any sound processing based on your motherboard, based on your sound card, as all the processing is done on the headset. The USB-C cable here is reinforced Kevlar, whatever that means, I'm guessing it's pretty strong, but it does uh, send out a bunch of cable noise directly into the ear cup, so you better not have this rub against your shirt or somewhere else around or move too much with the headset because all that movement will be audible. Since it is a USB-C headset, we have a USB-A to USB-C dongle, which is pretty compact and most likely will be attached to the actual cable when you travel or when you need to replug it in if you don't have a Type-C cable available on your machine. But there is no way to actually store this with the headset, so I would recommend plugging it into the cable if you don't want to lose this. We also have a 3.5 mm line in beside the USB Type-C, so you can use this headset in wired analog operation, but of course you lose out on that beautiful RGB illumination. I really like the consistency and uniformity of the illumination, and they're going after the whole Spaceship X gamery vibes without it looking kind of stupid. Build quality is fine, no rattling anywhere, even once you stretch out the headset to almost its maximum. At 349 grams, it's not exactly lightweight, and most of the padding is actually on the ear cups, so they're leatherette, really thick, and nice, soft, memory foam-like material. Unfortunately, there is no padding inside the ear cup, so that means that you can feel the plastic housing of the driver right underneath. In case your ear makes contact, it will not be comfortable. And number two, I'm surprised at how little padding there is on the headband. And for me personally, the clamping force is enough to stabilize the headset on my head without relying too much on the headband. And the clamping force here is absolutely perfect. No issues wearing this thing for hours, but do keep in mind, this is a closed design, so heat accumulation inside does happen. There is a bit of wiggle room on the ear cups to conform to your head size, and there is some plastic on plastic contact. I find it really interesting that the ear cups are removable, yet no replacement velour pads are included with the package, which normally come with like a gaming headset at this price point, but not here, leather only. But overall, I'd say it's a pretty good pair, comfort-wise and build quality-wise. Also, given the really thick ear cushions, wearing glasses with the gamer, absolutely no issues here. Even though this is a really low-profile frame, there's no clamping anywhere. 
it's nice. All of your controls are on the left side with the SXFI button to enable surround sound mode on, off, or enable battle mode. We have a volume wheel that has no tactility whatsoever, but uh, volume adjustment is instantaneous, which is great. And we have a mic mute button below. The microphone, of course, is removable, and there is no attachable pop filter because that is built into the microphone itself. And I do appreciate the red LED indicating when the microphone is working, when it's solid, and when it's mute, it does flash in red. I also appreciate this LED indicator because it has to face your mouth in order to have the best pickup, because even the slightest like it facing down, the volume pickup for the microphone will be completely different and you'll sound way too distant. And finally, you can change the illumination mode directly from the headset with the button above the microphone, giving you the preset color that you choose versus cycle and off. For a little added user experience, there's an announcer voice built in. So when you change the SXFI modes, you can hear what is being enabled or, or disabled. And the same thing with mic on or off. All right, so let's begin with the microphone test. What you're listening to now is the Commander microphone by the SXFI Gamer. First of all, there is built-in side tone, something that is there by default. You cannot remove it, aka you can hear slightly yourself, like it's not completely muted, um, which I would say is a positive thing, but normally you have the option to adjust the side tone volume in multiple other scenarios with USB headsets. Here, you cannot. I will say I really like the implementation of the LED when the microphone is working because otherwise, like if I position the microphone slightly down where the LED is facing my mouth, uh, like my neck, like even this would appear to be normal, right? But I sound a lot more distant than if I position the LED facing my lips. As for noise suppression, you guys can probably hear a little bit of modulation in my volume because it's trying to suppress whatever's happening in the ambient environment, which right now is pretty quiet. But if I was to start typing, you can maybe hear a little bit of mo modulation that is happening. With RTX voice, um, I think companies are trying to scramble to see who has the best solution in terms of like noise suppression. Um, but Creative here is trying to do is deliver a more balanced approach so it doesn't completely isolate all the keystrokes, for example, and like little banging and stuff around your environment. But I think it does a good job. As for the microphone quality, let me know what you think. How does it sound to your ears? What I'm hearing is nice bass pickup, good clarity without me sounding nasally nor too muddy. I wouldn't necessarily say it's like a broadcast quality microphone, but it's definitely getting up there. Next up is the Sennheiser PC37X. This is my benchmark gaming microphone. Uh, I think it sounds fantastic. It does have a bit more of that pop pickup, even though it has a built-in pop filter, but it has great bass, nice clarity, great full body sound, not as nasally as other gaming microphones. And now let's check out the Logitech G Pro X. And now we're listening to the G Pro X headset by Logitech. And so this one with the collaboration with Blue Voice, the software suite is quite powerful, but the microphone I think is not capable in delivering what the software can do in terms of ch changing the different equalizer settings for the vocal uh, pickup. And it's kind of standard. Um, let me know what you think between the three, which one sounded best to your ears. And finally, let's talk about the sound quality and whether or not the SXFI Gamer delivers uh, on their initial claim of having the best FPS sound mode, aka battle mode. In short, what battle mode is, it creates this virtual distance awareness that can give you an advantage in knowing exactly how far certain audio keys are coming from. And I think it's still a stereo reproduction, but there's some clever tweaking in here so that the highs are boosted without it sounding crunchy. While the Super X5 or SXFI modes, it it creates a surround sound mode, virtual personalized multi-channel, multi-directional recreation. And to be honest, I lowered my expectations when jumping into a game using battle mode, but then I realized uh, when you disable it, just how much better it is when battle mode is enabled for FPS games like COD, BF5, CSGO, and Escape from Tarkov. By default, the headset is quite neutral with a lot of power. This is USB powered after all, with a little double beep when you reach maximum volume, but good bass, nice clarity on the high end. The mid range isn't pushed too far forward. It isn't too, too close either, 
I would say it's a really good sounding pair for gaming by default. And of course, it's really important to have that baseline covered before introducing any of the sound modes. And so let me talk about battle mode first because I think it is quite game changing. In Battlefield 5, with it disabled, the game almost sounds flat, even though it isn't, it's a beautiful sound engine. But when battle mode is enabled, it's almost like applying contrast to an image. So uh, the highs are amplified, your directional awareness becomes so much more apparent and like pinpointing exactly where footsteps are coming from and how far they are and on what level they are. So not only do we have verticality, we have very good uh, directionality or distance measurement with battle mode enabled. Now jumping into CSGO, I did not find battle mode as useful there as I did with BF5, just because CSGO, I mean, the sound engine is good already by default in terms of being able to hear things, being able to position things within the map. And so you don't necessarily need to emphasize that anymore. And in fact, I, I found it to kind of go the other way where it gave me less uh, of an enjoyable audio than when battle mode is disabled. However, where I think battle mode is absolutely amazing is Escape from Tarkov. So in that game, you have different headsets that your character can wear to amplify different frequencies of audio inside the game. And so battle mode almost does that for you without the need to actually wear the headset on your character in game. So for EFT, when battle mode is enabled, I felt like I had an advantage because uh, the highs were boosted, but not too sharp. And this isn't something that I've been able to recreate simply with EQ tweaking. So I'm not sure what they're doing in their algorithm and making sure they're feeding the source audio in here to recreate a really good positional uh, like audio reproduction, but it, it gave me full awareness of verticality, uh, distance, and on a small map like Factory, I had total awareness of where enemies were coming from, as you can see by that uh, gameplay. And even when I went into a larger map like Shoreline, having a sniper that is shooting a kilometer away gave me that per perfect uh, distance measurement almost, like I could sense they're really far away, while the game by itself would also give you that, but battle mode kind of gives you an advantage in that sense where you don't have to boost the volume on the headphone, uh, simply enabling battle mode gives you better clarity without it sounding too harsh or like really tinny. So from my experience, battle mode is helpful in really busy audio engines, BF5, EFT, but I didn't particularly find it useful in CSGO. And now let's talk about the SXFI surround sound mode. And that one, I'm not entirely convinced is necessary. Just because there are many roadblocks along the way to get you to actually enjoy it. So first of all, you need to download an app on your phone, take a picture of your ear and your face, and it generates a more personalized audio experience when it comes to surround sound. You need to then install an application for the desktop, sign into your Super X5 profile, and use that for the surround sound experience. So the issues kind of begin from the beginning. I encountered multiple crashes on my iPhone, and that normally doesn't happen. And also whenever I try to download the sound profile SXFI through the desktop app, it sometimes just wouldn't download it. But when it finally does work, it does expand your audio environment and it is one of the better surround sound modes that I've experienced. Still not as good as what Sennheiser does with GSX 1000, but this is like a close second. What it's trying to do is recreate audio as if it was playing out of speakers in front of you. And in many situations, that could be an enjoyable experience. For example, if you don't feel like wearing headphones and having that almost close sound, turning on Super X5 gives you that open sound. It's still not perfect as many audio cues in game just completely get pushed too far out and like you don't hear the particular audio cues that you would in stereo. For example, the dialogue in Red Dead Redemption 2 just sounded a little bit off when SXFI was enabled while still allowing me to expand the audio environment, but I want to enjoy the important elements in the game. And in stereo mode, you can still enjoy the environment and its massive audio stage um, without SXFI. 
All right, so I think it's conclusion time. And what Creative have delivered here is a headset that is trying to be super ambitious and catering to the FPS market, to the esports market, while introducing features that are normally like shunned upon and pushed aside when it comes to exactly that gamer style. And I think they've succeeded here with battle mode that I do not play without when it comes to Escape from Tarkov. The microphone quality, as you heard, is kind of broadcasty, not exactly there. And I think they have a bit too of aggressive modulation and volume, making sure that you are heard regardless of how loud you speak. It is pretty impressive to hear the difference between personalized SXFI profile versus it not being there. Uh, and I think they're onto something, but it's gonna take a lot of convincing for people because I've been not recommending surround sound at all. And now I'm kind of flip-flopping back and I still don't recommend it for everything. But uh, I mean, battle mode is a different thing, but SXFI, it's kind of cool for a certain genre of games, but I wouldn't necessarily buy this headset for that particular reason. I think Creative is onto something here, catering to the gaming community with something super unconventional, and maybe more gaming audio brands should follow, adding a little bit of flair to their uh, gaming headsets so that uh, you can have a bit of an advantage. You know, it's like placing a digital crosshair from your monitor to give you an advantage in some uh, titles. It's kind of the same thing here, almost like adding contrast to the audio environment so that things that are important are audible and things that are not so important are muted in the background. But I think I'm done blabbering about this headset for now. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the audio quality again. Check out this other relevant content, subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video. Alright, have to play some games?